all four of us are from Hungary originally. This is the first time we are together. Yeah, this all, is all, all in, in five years. In the same room. In the same room. Yeah, <laughs> so we can, <laughs> we can thank DARPA for that. Our team is called Team Marmoti. Many, many years ago, we developed a software defined radio platform, which was called Marmoti, coming from the name of this animal, which can hibernate. And that radio was able to hibernate. We were kind of sucked in to the competition in a way that it was almost a non-brainer to join the very first DARPA challenge. We just jumped on the bandwagon and since then it seems to be that we cannot stop competing and cannot stop not doing the, the challenge. So. It is not just DARPA gives out prize money, but it actually creates the very necessary infrastructure to make it real. So, so it really provides you the carrots, and if not the sticks, but it provides you the cage <laughs> to, to live in. And, and these are the two most important things for me to, 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 to jump on board. The essential part of our, our approach is to separate the radio from a decision engine and uh, we designed the radio to be very flexible and, and give enough information for the decision engine. Our approach in the decision engine is to try to predict the future. I think in chess, if I play, I know the rules and I know that the opponent, for example, cannot just take my piece off the table, right? Or cannot just advance something which is illegal. But here, it's, it's, you, you don't know. So you really have to predict what the opponent is going to do and how the whole game is going to advance. Our chessboard is pretty messy, so instead of a single big brain, we like to break up the problem to smaller pieces and we are applying uh, uh, an ensemble of predictors to solve the individual pieces and combine them together uh, at the end. It's like having a, a board of advisors and just monitoring which one is giving me good feedback. And then I'm, okay, I'm going to listen to this guy for now because it seems to match the reality what I'm observing. I think there is two advantages of using multiple shallow predictors. One benefit is that you can fire one advisor and still you don't give up your complete machine learning based approach, right? The second benefit is that these advisors can whisper not just into your ear, but to each other ears. So you can string them together and can, can, can make them work while you are always picking the best solution for that specific task. So looking ahead to the final event, we hope that uh, our approach of using multiple advisors is going to pay off because one of the advisors is hopefully going to, to predict what's going to happen. We don't know which one, but one of them will. Yeah, it's like in the first phase we had babies that we just have to clean and feed but in phase three our babies became teenagers so we just can give them some advice and send them to fight it out with their peers in the school so it's scary. If you try that approach to create a, a bulletproof recipe for driving the radio you find yourself in a situation where your recipe becomes super complex and even if you add a little salt on top you can completely ruin the dish so to speak and this is probably the main reason why we would like to not start from scratch but instead of over engineering the existing recipe start something and see if uh, a data-driven uh, and learning-enabled component can help us to, to solve the same problem more elegantly or with a better performance. The reason why it's very timely to, to have this challenge now is because we have the means to implement very interesting and novel technologies but also there is a strong need uh, from the next generation radio technologies to figure out how we can share the radio spectrum more efficiently. And it is very good to see that, that right now, for instance, service providers and, and big equipment vendors seem to realize the, the potential in this. They don't, don't consider the dynamic spectrum or the paradigm, whole paradigm of dynamic spectrum access as a threat. For them. I don't have too much information how big companies work, but I suspect that they are more conservative and, and they are not willing to risk and, and try completely new things as easy as uh, researchers. So the Spectrum Collaboration Challenge is a very good middle ground between the two.
I'm proud that we could build up something from scratch. Nothing was given by DARPA or anybody else. Most of our results and the actual radio is really cooked from raw ingredients. I think we've already learned a lot and by the end of the competition we will prove that we've learned how to learn about completely new problems. The competitive nature of how DARPA organizes this uh, research endeavor is for me the most appealing effect and what drives me personally to not abandon ship and to do the next year and the next year and I can tell you if there will be ever <laughs> another DARPA or Spectrum or Radio Challenge, uh, I want to be there. We are Team Marmotic!